In today's Omar Vision tutorial, I'm going to go over how to do inverse kinematics in Unity using a preview package called Animation Rigging. Inverse kinematics. So first what I had to do was I was in Blender and I made a mesh and I made it have a sufficient amount of subdivisions so that it would bend nicely. Okay, see all the subdivisions of the mesh. And then inside that mesh, I placed uh, three bones. And the bones are attached to the mesh so that I could actually bend them and see the mesh bend with it. Okay, so that was exported as FBX through the export. And I drag and drop that into Unity. And then I added the animation rigging package to get this effect. So I just bent it inside of um, Blender, but usually you can't do that in Unity. You have to kind of just play the animation with the bones. So first thing in Unity with the animation rigging package, I could see the bones. And then I could put effectors um, for the bones. So this red ball is an effector. It's basically um, an inverse kinematic controller, a target of where these bones will point to. So if I press play, what will happen is I could actually do the inverse kinematics from the target that the bones will move toward that target to try to point to wherever they go to. Okay, so this is basically inverse kinematics in Unity using this target ball. So how did I set that up? Let's start again another project from scratch. So I'll close this one down and we'll start up a new project in Unity and do this together. It's kind of easy. So I'll say new, um, we'll call it Wormy2 and we'll create the 3D project. All right, so here I have my new Unity project. Let me drag in the asset that I used, the, um, the mesh with the bones in it called Wormy. And let me drag in a texture that I'll use for the floor. All right, now, uh, let's see. First things first, here I have the project. I need to get the animation rigging package into my project. So first thing I wanna do is make sure that I have preview packages turned on, enable preview packages, so that I could see the preview packages in the package manager. Then I'm gonna go to window, package manager, and wait for it to load up. First thing it shows are the packages in my project, but I'm just gonna switch that to Unity Registry. And now all these preview packages show the animation rigging package is the one I want. So I'll install that. And it takes a minute. And what you notice is up here in the main menu, it doesn't show animation rigging yet, but once the package is installed, it will show animation rigging up here in the top. Okay, now I'm gonna add some things to my scene. I'm gonna add a floor. And I'll just make it five by five. Then I'll put a texture on the floor and I will tile it a little more than it is. Three by five, okay. Then I'll take Wormy and I'll put Wormy in the scene, the mesh, bam, right there. And if you notice the lighting's a little dark, so in Unity 2020, I could just click this button here and say generate lighting, and now it'll generate the global illumination lighting. I'll pre-calculate it. All right, so now we have the things in the scene. So it would be nice to see the bones inside of Wormy, and with the animation rigging package, you can do that. So I pick Wormy, and then I add the, from animation rigging, I click bone renderer setup, and now I could see the bones inside, and I could make them thicker or thinner, and I'm just gonna make them thicker to visually see them thicker. And this is what happens inside here. This cube, this is my mesh. Let me just name it. And the armature of the three bones. I select Wormy, animation rigging, and I add a rig setup. Okay, and this will set, this will add an animation rig to my um, Wormy. So I could do the inverse kinematics. I could do other things too. And it added an animator also, even though I don't have any animations. So now I select the rig. Under the rig in the hierarchy of my objects from my game object, this is where I'll put different constraints that I could control the bones from. All right, so here under rig, let me just add an empty game object. And I will just call this like the head because I want this to be attached to the head bone right there. And I could choose a, a constraint, a rig constraint to control the bones with. So let's see if I say add component. Up here we have the animation rigging components from the animation package. And there's all these different kind of constraints I could add to control the rig. So the one I'm going to try is the two bone IK constraint. It's kind of designed like if you had a humanoid and you want it to be on the arm or the leg. Okay, so there's a two bone um, IK constraint. I'm going to add that one. 
And now you can see that it has like these three bones that it wants. It wants you to start off with like, what is the tip? So the tip is going to be up here that I want to add. So let's open up the armature and we could see the bones um, are set up in a hierarchy. The tip, of course, is going to be this last bone right here. So let me select the head. That This is where I have the two bone constraint. And then I'm going to drag the tip bone right there and put it on tip. Now I could go ahead and drag the other two bones, mid and root, or I could just let it auto-calculate from that tip to go two bones up. See, bone one and bone two. Bone one and bone two are added automatically. And the other thing it also adds automatically, it creates a head target and a hint. So right here under the um, head, you can see that it added a head target and it added a hint. So let's see, the head target, if I have that clicked on, right now it's showing it's right there. I want it to be right here you know, because that's kind of what, what it's controlling right there. So let me select the, let me select that tip bone. And then from the inspector window in the transform, let me copy the world placement of my tip. Okay. And then I'll select the target and I will apply the placement there so that um, they're together. Now on the target, I want it to be visual as well in the inspector, I mean in the scene window. So here with the target selected, I could open this up and there is a locator effector there, but it's kind of small. You see, I can make it bigger and you, you basically get that yellow X, but I can pick different shapes. I can pick a ball like I did in the other scene and I can leave the ball target there. The other, um, the other object that was added for my head is this thing called a hint. Since the bones are going to bend and you know, you could imagine that this would be like um, arms or legs, which way do the arms or legs bend? That's what the hint is going to tell the rig, which way should it bend? So for that, let me just try a different effector. I'll use a box one and make it bigger. Okay. And then I'll position that effector like right behind the elbow of this guy, supposedly. So let me move him over and move him up. Let's see. So back a little. Now let's see in 3D view if I got that straight. Uh huh. Okay. So when the bending happens, it's going to try, it's going to bend toward this way. Okay, now what's that little white dot? I don't know. Is that my head object? Yeah, that's my head object. I guess I could place that as well at the tip. So let me copy the tip and then the tip placement and take the whole head thing. And instead of it being down there, let me put it up here. Okay, so everything's up there. Oh, my head, heart, my head thing went away. Okay, so we have these objects all under Wormy, all right? Now, nothing's going to happen until I press play. What the? Oh, look at these guys. They're way up there. Um, I may have to replace them. You know what? I guess they were an offset of where the head was. And when I moved the head, they continually also moved. So let me just redo this again. So the, um, the leaf bone. Sorry, I have to do this again. Let me copy the position of the leaf bone. And then place the target in that position. Paste it. And then the, the hint says which way the bones will bend by default. Uh, let me just paste that there too, but then I could just move it down and move it back. All right, there we go. Now that things are placed properly and visual, now when I press play, I could actually move the target and the bones will move. All right, so let me pick the target and I could move it and you can see the bones will move and that they bend toward the hint. They bend toward the hint. And so they want to bend. So the, this is great and all that I could move this in scene view, but the the benefit is that I could actually move that target when I'm playing a game. I can move it with a script, not with my um, manually in scene view. So I could add something to Wormy. I could add a script to them. Let's create a script, C sharp script, call it Wormy, and let's add that script to Wormy. Come on, Wormy, get your script. Yum yum. So now Wormy has a script here, and we could just pass Wormy something so that we can move the target through script. Okay, so let me just gut this out and gut this out, and I'll start off with the things that I need my script to know. So I need it to know um, what the rig is, and by default, it's not going to know what rig is because we have to add a package. We have to add a using statement at the top, um, and I'll just call this rig equals null. So let's see if we could find the right thing to add. We want to add... Um, using Unity Animations Rigging, bam, and now it knows what rig is, okay? So we, we want to tell our game object that, um, and we also want to maybe have a move speed for us moving up that, moving that target thing around, and we'll just say 3.5, okay? Then we're going to have a script to actually do the moving, private 
um, void update, and an update function will read will read the x you know will read the keys to move up, down, left, and right. So let's see. Um, float vert equals input dot get axis vertical gets reach from the vertical axis and float horizontal equals input dot get axis horizontal axis. And here I'm just we're just going to show you how we can control the target with the um, with the with a script. So actually here the rig, if I look at it, the rig. Let's see when the script updates itself. Okay, so the rig is this. And the reason I want that is because how much this follows the target depends on a weight. All right, so let me explain that. If I press play, and here's a target, and I move the target here, like this. Now, how much the target follows, I could either do it on the head object itself to control just the head object. It has a weight thing that says how, what's the percentage that it's going to point toward the target or the entire rig, because I could have multiple constraints. I could do it from there in the entire rig, how much it's going to, well, oh, that doesn't work. So I have to do it on the head. Oh, that's because that was zero. So on the rig, the entire rig, I could control for all the constraints on the rig, how much they're going to actually follow the effectors. So the reason that this weight thing is here is say that this had an animation that it was playing, you know, like it was a walk animation or an idle animation. And then I wanted it while it's animating for some extension of the armature to point toward a target. That's why they have the weight here. All right, so I want the weight, let's see, for the head. What I really want is this guy. I want this empty game object, and I want the constraint. I want the, I want this guy. I want the head. I want the target, actually. I want the target in my game object script. Not the, hmm. Well, I want the rig so I can control how much it follows, and then I want the target so I can move the target around. So let's say here that I need a transform for the target. You know, I need to know what the target is. Public transform target equals null, all right? Then in the script, I could give the, then in the inspector, I could give those two values to the script. So let's see, we got the rig, so I control the weight, and we had the target, so I could control the position of the target. So now, back to my script, I have the vertical and horizontal, so let's move it based on that. So target dot transform, no, translate, translate. It's gonna move back and forth by the vertical. So vector three dot forward times the move speed times the vertical value, you know, to move back or forth. And well, let's make this one up and down. Okay, up and down. And then just to keep it time delta time. Where are you delta time? Right there. And then we'll also, for the horizontal, we'll have that control the targets left and right. Vector three dot right times move speed. Oopsie. Times capital M move speed times horizontal input times time dot delta time. Okay. So now in the script, I am moving the target up, down, left, and right. And let's try this out. I save it. I come back here. I press play. And. I could, I'm um, up and down. Okay, that one was silly. Left and right. All right, so you can see in a game how I maybe could control like the head of something or, you know, whatever. So anyway, that's a simple little video showing up how to set up the animation rigging and using one of the constraints. There's other constraints there, which I'm sure um, maybe in the next video I'll show a mix of animation and this together because I see a lot of potential here. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.